Hey everyone, hope you're closing out 2018 with a bang. As you may have noticed, I've been pretty busy over at the uh, Minidisc YouTube channel, but I wanted to close out the year with sharing some of my favorite music from 2018. I haven't had the opportunity up until now, so there's going to be quite a few things that I really want to share with you, uh, particularly my favorite album of 2018. And you'll find links to everything I'm going to talk about in this video in the description. Uh, I wanted to start out with some notable mentions uh, for albums of 2018. I want to start with Ephorize by Cupcake. Uh, just some really brilliantly brash, surprisingly introspective at times hip-hop. So if you're into that, check that out. Uh, Time and Place by Caro Caro Bonito. This was a bit of a surprise for me because uh, up until now, I've sort of associated Caro Caro Bonito with a sort of twee, cutesy kind of pop act with that mix of Japanese and English. And Time and Place came out as something that was slightly more edgy, uh, but still whimsical with some kind of noise pop elements and none of that uh, trademark Japanese singing. So uh, it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to see uh, what 2019 brings with that band. Uh, I also want to mention the soundtrack to the film Crazy Rich Asians, which was a lot of fun. Um, there were some real gems in that soundtrack that really made me smile, particularly uh, Sally Ye's Cantonese version of Material Girl. So worth checking out, um, worth seeing the movie. I know it's not the most amazingly thoughtful movie out there, but the kind of pageantry um, on display in that movie is uh, worth seeing alone. So before I get to my favorite album of 2018, I want to mention two runners up. The first one is Anthropocene by Shuda Hasunuma Philharmonic. So I've mentioned uh, Shuda Hasunuma in previous videos. Uh, he has, uh, he's a Japanese artist who kind of makes indie pop music. And I think of him kind of like the Japanese Sufjan Stevens. But he has a side project called the Shuda Hasunuma Philharmonic, where he works with a bunch of really talented and unique musicians um, and uh, that group this year produced the album Anthropocene um, and that album really cemented in my mind that Shuda Hasunuma is a tremendously talented uh, artist who has this knack for making poppy yet complex uh, compositions. Uh, this was a really wonderful work, well worth checking out if you like your kind of thoughtful but still kind of contemporary music. Uh, really unique instruments and voicings in the album. Uh, something that's just really densely layered and yet refreshingly kind of contemporary. Really, really recommend it. Something that says something about, um, I don't know, uh, there's something refreshingly modern about the music that he makes. And I don't know really how to convey it beyond the sense of contemporary chic that is uh, conveyed in his music. The other uh, runner-up, or I guess this isn't really an album recommendation so much as an artist recommendation for 2018, is the Japanese pop artist group uh, I discovered uh, this year, thanks to an auto toy recommendation. It is the group Wednesday Campanella, and I am so, so impressed uh, with this group because they make this kind of endlessly creative J-pop. And J-pop is not necessarily a genre that people really can kind of associate with, uh, you know, anything other than kind of cutesy, uh, kind of nothing music, I guess. And that's not true um, of the genre as a whole, but particularly with this group, I think it's uh, a group that makes every album endlessly creative. Uh, and I can't give them album of the year for 2018 because I think that Wednesday Cabanella's album in 2018 is not necessarily my favorite album from them. Um, Galapagos was the album in 2018, though the track Melos on that album is really worth having a listen to. But if you must listen to one album from Wednesday Campanella, listen to Zinpangu, uh, because it's incredibly densely layered uh, J-pop music that is not afraid to sound a little weird at times, while being aggressive and whimsical and fun. Uh, really, really have a listen, even if you don't you know, understand Japanese. I don't understand Japanese and I still have a lot of fun uh, listening to the composition and production in that album. And now we get to my album of 2018. 
So a little drum roll, please. It is Oil of Every Pearl's Uninsides by Sophie. Now, I know that a lot has been said about this album, and I suspect that it has made plenty of people's uh, top albums of 2018. So I don't want to repeat too much what other people have said, but I have my own thoughts about this album. Yes, uh, the album has this amazing stomach-churning production that sounds like you've blenderized pop music with pots and pans, basically. And uh, in this year, I've gone from never having heard of Sophie to hunting down every single work where she's worked with another artist, like, say, uh, this whole spider web of musicians, Charlie XCX, uh, Let's Eat Grandma, Hannah Diamond, and that whole kind of PC music collective. Uh, this year, I guess the first half of this year was basically consumed um, in, in musical terms of me, you know, exploring this whole universe of music that I had not up until this point really discovered. But the reason why this album by Sophie made my 2018, basically, as far as music goes, is that it is one of the most emotionally resonant albums that I have ever heard. Uh, there are so many elements in this album that are worth talking about. Uh, it's an album that explores queer sexuality, uh, questions of appearance, of artificiality and identity. But really, what this album means to me um, as, a, as a queer person is it's an album where Sophie is coming out as a woman. Uh, and this is her sincere statement of the fear and doubt that she felt before and while she was transitioning and maybe even after. Um, and also her kind of eventual self-acceptance. So there's this emotional core behind the, the kind of theatrical production of this album. And a lot of the questions that this album asks are questions that I've wrestled with myself. And I never, ever thought that I would ever hear an album that actually explored them so cogently in music. And not only in terms of the lyrics of the music, but in terms of the production, the way this album sounds, the way it's produced, because... Uh, Sophie has taken all these kind of pop feminine signifiers and she's chopped them up and she's edited them and stretched them and mutilated them. And and in doing that, Sophie is conveying something about the sort of trauma and the kind of psychological turbulence of gender dysphoria. And with that, she's saying something about how we sort of edit appearance and presentation and questions of subjective reality. But incidentally, in doing that, she's also making incredibly abrasive, exhilarating pop music. So I could go on and on. I could probably write an essay about this album. But for now, what I can say is go and have a listen to it. Uh, and everything else that I have mentioned in this video, you can check it out in the description. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite album of 2018 was. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful end to the year and happy listening.